Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Med. Alright, so in this week's video, I'm going to talk to you about how I study and learn anatomy in medical school. So how do you start to study anatomy? The first thing that I like to do is collect the information. So the first thing that I like to do is to look at the course outline and then at the learning objectives in either your lecture notes or your lecture slides. So by looking at your lecture slides, either at the very beginning or at the very end, your lecture will often let you know what are the most important points, what are the structure you need to be able to identify, what are the important organs or important landmarks that you absolutely need to know. Then if you have dissection labs at your school, then you should definitely look at the pre-labs, the in-lab tasks that you have to do, and the post-labs because there are a lot of useful information in there regarding what you need to know, what you need to be able to identify. Oftentimes, at least for me, what I do is I look at the lecture slides. So at the beginning, we have a few lines about what we absolutely need to know or understand or what we need to be able to describe. Then I look at the pre-labs. What we have is we have to look at Ackland videos. Uh, it's just like quick summary videos about like different structures. I'm going to talk more about Ackland's in a few minutes. Then during the lab, we have like a whole list of structures that we need to be able to identify onto the cadaver. And then the post labs are often like a few questions uh, that are asking you to either identify stuff or asking about their functions or innervations and stuff like that. So what I like to do is just to collect all the information, collect all the things that I need to know, make a big list. It might be a bit overwhelming when you look at all the subjects and all the different things that you need to know, but that's okay, assuming you start well in advance. So the way I do it then is I divide the information in compartments or in different regions. So let's say you're doing the musculoskeletal system while well, you're going to do different parts of the body or different muscle groups. Then if you're doing the organs or the internal anatomy, well, then you're going to divide it by sections like the thoracic cage. And then you can divide that further into like the mediastinum and then posterior, anterior, middle, superior. So you kind of need to divide this, those different sections and then split your lists into these different sections. So once you have that, then what kind of learning resources can you use in order to learn that material? Well, sure, you're going to have your lecture slides, your lecture notes, but anatomy most of the time is quite dry, not going to lie. And the content is quite complex and visual, especially if you're doing like the musculoskeletal system, which I did last semester. This semester, now we're doing the internal organs. So this is much better in my opinion, at least, because now you can at least like link the structure with the function, like with what you're seeing in physiology, and then you link those two together. So I think this is really cool, which you can do a bit less with the musculoskeletal system. I mean, yes, you can see like the different functions of the muscles, like the deltoids and stuff with uh, the different fibers and how they're aligned and the attachments and the origins and also with the nerve supply you know that if like one nerve is damaged well it can do this movement so yes uh, but it's just different so what i would oftentimes do is i would listen to the lecture only one time so i would listen to the lecture see if uh, the lecturer says something that is not on the slides says that is something is really important that you must know for the exam and obviously i'm looking at the learning objectives which are by far the most important points of the lectures but after that, I never really looked back at the lecture. Um, sure, sometimes there are like really good images or diagrams or drawings, which are extremely useful. I would just take a screenshot of those and put them in my notes. But apart from that, I don't really look back on these lectures at all. So now you might be wondering, well, why? Well, first of all, learning anatomy for me is very visual. Uh, listening to someone naming structures is not the most efficient way for me at least, to be learning about anatomy. This is not how I retain information the best. I need to practice, practice, and then practice some more in order to remember all the different structures, the landmarks, and basically everything. And I just can't do all of that if I just listen passively to a lecture. So if I'm not using the lecture slides that much, what am I using then? Let's start with the first most important resource that I use. It's called Teach Me Anatomy. So what is Teach Me Anatomy then? Well, there's a desktop version of the app and also an app that you can download on your phone. It's free to use unless you want to have like some more complex features like 3D models and stuff. But still, for the basics, it's pretty good. And it even goes into quite a lot of detail in some of the different structures. So let me just open up the app. I'll put it right here on the screen. So once you open up the app, you can just browse by the different regions that you have. So here you can see you have all the different sort of regions of the body. Let's do the thoracic cage. Uh, then I can choose, let's say the organs. 
and then I'm going to do the heart because why not? So once you open up the heart, you had all these different chapters, let's say. So let's choose chambers of the heart, for example, because why not? So here you see you have quite a lot of text, quite a lot of explanations talking about the different structures. You also have a few pictures here and there intercalated between the text. Um, if you go at the bottom also, you can click on images. And so you can see like the images that they presented to you. And if you want to know some more details, well, you just go back on the text. So that's cool. And then something else that is really cool is that you have some little quizzes. So let's say, for example, in this specific question, what is the name of the internal smooth muscular ridge that divides the right atrium? So if you've studied your anatomy and if you know, well, you would know that it's called the Crista Terminalis. And let's see if that's the right answer. I mean, I hope it is. Yeah, so there it is. Krista Terminal is good. My exam is in like one week and a half. So yeah, anyways, but this app is really good. Really, really good. You can have all the different organs, all the different systems. There's also uh, the musculoskeletal system in there. You can do osteology. Um, it's really good overall. You don't have that many questions built into the app. We still have like quite a few for every single different chapter, every single different sections. So that's often what I would start with. So then the next very important resource that I use is Ackland's Anatomy Videos. So those of you who are familiar with Ackland's videos are going to ask me, well, okay, what's the difference between having a lecture telling you the different structures or a video of someone showing you the structures? Well, for me, I think it's easier to see the structures through videos. Um, because in Ackland's you have cadaveric dissections and they show you uh, they either point it or they touch the structure or they have arrows and you don't get that in lecture notes. In Ackland's they remove structures, they move them around, they show you different angles so you can fully understand. Whereas if you're only looking at images or slides, well, you can't really have the same level of understanding, at least according to me. So let me just show you a very quick example here that I found on YouTube. You do need a subscription for Actons, however. So if your school gives it, uh, well, for sure, go ahead and use them because it's extremely useful. So here, for example, is just an example of a video of the lungs. So they're showing you the different structures that they have. And then they're probably going to move towards the anterior region in the chest. So. There you go. Now we can see the mediastinum, which is going to be highlighted quite soon. This is not something that you can get with the lecture slides because and they're also showing you like different angles, different things. They're going to lift up some structures. They're going to remove the lungs in quite a bit. And here to remove the heart, the mediastinum, so you can see like the different structures. So for me personally, this is an extremely good learning resource and I love to watch these videos. It puts everything like in context. We can see um, where it is and where the vessels go and, and most importantly, the relations to other structures because in anatomy, relations are extremely important because you need to know what is above what, uh, what supplies what and stuff like that. So uh, Eklund's is a very good resource. And then what other resources do you have to study anatomy? Well, obviously you're going to have textbooks. So let me show you the two most popular ones. So you're going to have Netters and also Gray's Anatomy. So here on the right, I have Netters and on the left, I have Gray's Anatomy. So the main difference between the two is in Netters, you only have images and that's it. You don't have any text, you don't have any explanations, you don't have any clinical stuff. You only have the images, which is extremely good. However, in Gray's Anatomy, you're going to have a lot of text, you're going to have a lot of explanations, you're going to have little stories about different structures, you're going to have some clinical relevance. Here you have this cool diagram, for example. So the main difference really is just the amount of text in the two. Wait, let me put that all right. Okay, so in Netters, you don't have any text at all, whereas in Gray's, you have a lot of text. Something that they both have in common is that the images are really nice, they're really well identified, and you can find all the different parts of the body as you would expect. I would recommend getting one of those or the PDF version like I have. So then what about the exam? Well, most of you are probably going to have two different exams. You're going to have a lab exam and then a theory under the form of like MCQ type of thing exam. So about the lab exam, I made a whole video about that, which you can click right here. Very briefly, you're going to have like different types of questions, different levels of questions. The first level is going to be identifying. So you're going to have an arrow or something pointing at a structure. You're going to be asked simply to identify what it is. Then the second level, you can have either nerve supply or blood supply to the whatever structure that was pointed before. And then the last, the hardest level would be like either function or something clinical about that specific structure. Now you're probably wondering, well, how do I study for these exams? How do you study OV? Well, let's get into it. So anatomy, as you might know, is very visual. 
what a surprise, right? So you need to be able to see the body or imagine the specific region in your head and see the different structures and layers. And the first thing to do if you have labs is to prepare in advance for these labs. Make the most out of them. It's not something that you have every single day and some schools don't even have cadaver labs. So it's a real golden opportunity that you have to learn anatomy. So make the most out of them by studying beforehand the material. So once you get into the lab, you actually know what you're looking out for. But yeah, prepare for your anatomy labs. And then in terms of the theory, what I like to do is just to actively recall, active recall the different structures, the different elements or the layers. And there are a few ways you can do that. I'm probably going to make a whole video about how I use active recall to study in medical school because it's an extremely useful study technique. And I should have done that in my undergrad, but I didn't because I just didn't come across that technique. Um, there are different ways you can do it. You know, you can ask yourself questions. You can teach to the wall or someone preferably who knows about the material as well, like one of your colleagues. But due to COVID, I understand it might be a bit harder. So you can use your wall, just talk to the mirror or whatnot. Um, then you can create lists, just actively recall everything you can about a specific structure and just write out everything you know about it. That's a good way to do it as well. Then you have a few apps that can actually help you to do that uh, using flashcards. You can use Anki, for example. I think that's pretty much the gold standard app for flashcards. Uh, you can do them yourself. You can either download them from online, from decks that are pre-made. Uh, I think I'm going to be making a whole video about how I use Anki um, to study because it's a really, really good study technique for flashcards specifically. So I think basically what I'm trying to say is just test yourself before the actual exam. Try to look online for quizzes or even through like the app Teach Me Anatomy, for example, they have a few questions. Ask your teacher if you have past exams or different questions that you can practice with. So get to know what you're gonna be asked. Get to know what the exam is gonna be like. If you have a lab exam, well, try to speak with older years. Uh, try to see if the teacher is taking screenshots from some resource or if they're actually taking picture of the cadavers in the lab with the different structures. So then you're gonna know, you're gonna have a different approach when you're actually in the lab trying to identify. And also look through the post labs and pre labs uh, where um, the TAs might have put some pictures of the cadavers which you can use to study because some of them might even come up on your actual exam. And then finally, I know this may sound very cliche, but try to link the structure with the function. So the heart, for example, you know, you have the two atria and the two ventricles. So then uh, try to link, you know, with um, with blood flow, for example, or the electrical conduction. So let's say for blood flow, you know that the blood comes from the SVC and the IVC, and then that goes into the right atria, and then it goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And then where does that blood go? It goes to the lungs. So that's the pulmonary valve. Then that comes back into the left atrium and that goes through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. And then where does it go? Into the aorta. So through the aortic valve and that, that's the systemic circulation. So, so try to find things that help you understand the anatomy uh, rather than just learning the different structures and the names. If you put a bit of logic into it, like physiology, either through blood flow or whatever you want, it makes it way easier to remember. I know that's very hard to do for the musculoskeletal system. Uh, I had a lot of trouble doing that, but now for organs, it's just so much better you know i find it just so much easier because you can link the structure and the function so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video this is how i personally study and learn anatomy uh, this might not work for everyone but i definitely encourage you to try it out um, these are just a few of the resources that are out there i bet that there's so many more that i'm not even aware of so definitely do your research in terms of what you want to use but good luck on your study if you didn't see my previous videos i'm gonna link them right here and also have an instagram which you can follow me at ov.men also please comment leave a like and subscribe and see you in the next video